friends this is princey singh and i am going to deal with few of the current affairs topic of environmental technology you can definitely expect questions for prelims 2016 from this let's hope for the best and begin unique insect kiki buna entomologists have found the world's smallest flying insect a fair fly that goes by the name kiki ki buna in tamil nadu it is a multicellular organism that is smaller than single celled organism it was first discovered in trinidad around 20 years ago and later in hawaii now coming to koringa bird sanctuary of andhra pradesh it has 89000 birds between march and september and most of the birds are migratory birds from arctic russia china mongolia and it has the largest second largest stretch after sundarbans reason which are responsible for increasing number of birds are dwindling of mud ponds in kulikat low levels of water at point kalimar Koringa and Gaderu rivers and their branches intersect in the sanctuary area. It is a part of Godavari estuary comprising extensive mangroves and dry deciduous tropical forest. Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary is a wildlife sanctuary and estuary situated in Andhra Pradesh, India. It is the second largest stretch of mangrove forest in India with 24 mangrove tree species and more than 120 bird species. It is home to critically endangered white-backed vulture and the long-billed vulture. The sanctuary has a fair population of golden jackal, sea turtle and fishing cat and a healthy breeding population of smooth-coated otter. The sanctuary has an 18 km long sand pit where olive ridley sea turtles nest from January to March every year. Great Indian Bustard. Uh this news came in Hindu around uh, 7 March 2016. and as you all know that great indian bustard is a critically endangered species listed by icun and there is lot of free of hope for revival of great indian bustard in belari karnataka banks of tungabhadra sir guppa taluk here you can see some pics of great indian bustard how beautiful it is uh in semi arid and arid grasslands in the interiors of sir guppa taluk and could potentially be perfect habitat for great indian bustard and uh, it also likes open country with thorn scrub tall grass interspersed with cultivation and it avoids irrigated areas please keep this in mind threat is mainly the habitat loss and poaching ministry of environment forest and climate change along with the state governments of gujarat maharashtra and rajasthan will be involved in artificial breeding program of great indian bustard now coming to e waste management rules amendment sorry for not giving you any kind of information here i will update it as soon as possible sorry again doyang lake nagaland it is famous for the amur falcon birds migratory bird species which are amur falcons stay in doyang lake during their flight from mongolia to south africa and the pankti village in nagaland is also considered as the world's amur falcon capital olive ridley turtles earlier i talked about koringa bird sanctuary there also you can find some olive ridley turtles also known as pacific ridley sea turtle olive turtles are a medium sized species of sea turtle found in warm and tropical waters primarily in the pacific and indian oceans according to iucn it is vulnerable olive ridley is predominantly carnivorous and common prey items include jellyfish by bryozoans snails shrimp crabs rock lobsters and worms The coast of Odisha in India is the largest mass nesting site for the olive ridley followed by the coast of Mexico and Costa Rica. Convention on Migratory Species and Inter-American Convention for the Protection and Conservation of Sea Turtles have also provided olive ridleys with protection leading to increased conservation and management for this marine turtle. 
they are best known for their behavior of synchronized nesting in mass numbers which are termed as arivadas wildlife authorities have launched a massive exercise to conserve olive ridley turtles in the krishna wildlife sanctuary in andhra pradesh members of the yanadi tribe are directly involved in the conservation bid they have been given the task of collecting the eggs on the beach and maintaining the rookeries so good of them blue mormon it has been declared as the state butterfly of maharashtra first state to have a state butterfly and butterfly is the first insect to get official status ever scientific name of blue mormon is papilio polymnestra and it is mainly found in australasia in domalia ecozone australia very beautiful butterfly it is now coming to culling of animals it was recently in news the state courts were permitted to declare animals that were coming in conflict with humans like nil gai rhesus monkey wild pigs etc as vermin in bihar himachal pradesh and uttarakhand this means that those who kill these animals will for a year will not be subject to the j terms and fines that hunting these animals typically in wild wild animals are protected basically by the wildlife protection act of 1972 under which animals and birds are classified on the basis of threats they face into four schedules the highly endangered tiger is the highest schedule one and hares in schedule four each class gets its different grades of protection and the law allows all except schedule one animals to be temporarily slaughtered as schedule five for women Nil gai, wild pig, and rhesus monkey come under schedule two and three. Now, talking about nil gai, the nil gai or blue bull is the largest Asian antelope and is endemic to the Indian subcontinent. The sole member of the genus Boslephus. The nil gai is diurnal. Diurnal is a uh, species which is active mainly during the day. Nil gai prefer areas with short bushes and scattered trees in scrub forest and grassy plains. They are common in agricultural lands but hardly occur in dense forest. Major populations occur in the Tarai lowlands in the foothills of the Himalayas that is northern India but the antelope is especially found in Nepal and Pakistan and is ex- extinct in Bangladesh. The nil gai is categorized as least concerned by the IUCN that's why they have uh, permitted this culling of nilgai nilgai have been considered a pest in several north indian states as they ravage crop fields and cause considerable damage the nilgai has been declared as vermin in bihar in india the nilgai is protected under schedule 3 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 major protected areas for the nilgai across india include gir national park gujarat bandogar national park bori wildlife sanctuary Kanha National Park, Pachmarhi Biosphere Reserve, Panna Tiger Reserve, Pench Tiger Reserve, Sanjay National Park, Satpura National Park, Tadoba Andhari Reserve, Kumbhalgarh, Ranthambore National Park, and Sariska Tiger Reserve. Uh, culling of animals. I don't think this is a good good move by the government of India. There are many other alternatives through which you can prevent. animals from uh, destroying their crop fields although animal activists are against this decision of the government but still the government has not put any kind of stay order on culling of animals and still it's in practice and the people are enjoying the delicious meat of nil gai and rhesus monkey and wild pig now coming to cop 21 paris the most important topic for this year prelims mains and you can expect questions in interview also if you have geography optional cop 21 paris climate it was a step for working towards climate justice india was able to secure its interest and that of developing countries in the paris agreement The Paris Agreement has un- in- unequivocally acknowledged the imperative of climate justice and has based itself on the principles of equity and common but differentiated responsibilities. 
the agreement acknowledges the development imperatives of india and other developing countries india pavilion set up by the government highlighted the initiatives taken by various ministries state governments missions under national action plan on climate change industries civil services ngos etc the prime minister inaugurated the indian pavilion and released parampara a book on india's culture and climate friendly sustainable practices very nice uh, move by india comprehensive and balanced indc submitted which includes adaptation mitigation requirement of finance technology transfer capacity building to put forward and further propagate a healthy and sustainable way of living based on traditions and values of conservation and moderation to adopt a climate friendly and a cleaner path than the one followed hit hard for by others at corresponding level of economic development to reduce the emissions intensity of its gdp by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level this was indc of india to achieve about 40 percent cumulative electric power installed capacity from non fossil fuel based energy resources by 2030 with the help of transfer of technology and low cost international finance including from green climate fund to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent through additional forest and tree cover by 2030 for this only purpose government has taken various steps like rejuvenation of forest green highway policy and all and for increasing the renewable energy um, base of india the government has also taken various steps like it has entered into international solar alliance in which 121 countries have signed between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn all these are very good moves by government and let's hope that it will definitely help in reducing the carbon emissions to better adapt to climate change by enhancing investments in development programs in sectors vulnerable to climate change particularly agriculture water resources himalayan region coastal regions health and disaster management to mobilize domestic and new and additional funds from developed countries to implement the mitigation and adaptation actions in view of the resource required and the resource gap to build capacities create domestic framework and international architecture for quick diffusion of cutting edge climate technology in india and for joint collaborative r&d for such future technologies science express climate action special flag off to contribute towards increasing the understanding of the science of climate change the train will halt at 64 locations in about 20 states across the country and this is the outstanding move by government of india that it is running a train called science express climate action special it will travel to different cities of india and will make people aware about the climate change and how to combat it now what were the initiatives taken to reduce pollution two schemes nagar van udyan yojana and school nursery yojana have been launched nagar van udyan yojana aims to create at least one city forest in each city with a minimum area of 25 hectares the scheme aims at creation of a city forest in forest areas within their jurisdiction up to a maximum of 100 hectares and minimum area of 20 hectares the objective of the yojana is to create 200 city forest in the country and the school nursery yojana aims to build a lasting bond of students with nature this is also very marvelous move by government of india because when students are made very Um, close to the nature then they would readily come forward to conserve it to preserve it compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority kampa it was also recently in use to ensure expeditious 
into utilization in transparent and efficient manner and safety and security of the accumulated amounts and fresh approvals. The compensatory afforestation fund bill 2015 has been introduced in the parliament. Enactment of the bill will pave way for utilization of the huge accumulated amount significantly contributing towards conservation and development of forest and wildlife. Unspent balance available with the said ad hoc body has increased to about Rs 38,000 crore. Under Green India Mission, prospective plans and annual plans of operations of six states have been approved in the first sitting of the National Executive Council held in May 2015. The Green India Mission aims at increasing the forest tree cover by 5 million hectare as well as increasing the quality of the existing forest cover in another 5 million hectare. An amount of Rs 50.77 crore has been released to four states out of the fund allocation of Rs 64 crore. At the second city of the National Executive Council held in November 2015, perspective plan and annual plan of operations of another four states have been approved. Other initiatives, what are the other, other initiatives taken by government? Sorry, I have not updated much about that, but I will update it also. Now, that was all about climate change, COP21. Now, coming to the topic, save vultures. Ketoprofen, diclofenac, this is the medicine because of which vultures are dying in India and they have come to a status of endangered. Three vulture species, namely white back, slender built, and long built, have been severely affected by diclofenac. This drug causes renal failure in these birds. The reason for decline of birds like steppy eagle, which mostly scavenges on animal carcasses, is the use of veterinary drug diclofenac used to treat livestock. Now, Green Climate Fund, it is a framework within UNFCC, United Nations Framework of Climate Change. Redistribute money developed to developing, assist in adaptation and mitigation practices. practices. Formally established by UNFCC decision in Durban 2011, Groundwork was led in non-binding Copenhagen Accord 2009 and its headquarters is at Songo in Cheon, South Korea. Listening the name of Incheon, I remember something that Incheon, Incheon is also taking initiative for the rights of the persons with disability. Something related with Incheon only. Sorry, it was not relevant here in the environmental ecology topic. Mercury pollution, burning coal for power and heat, a major source of mercury. Mercury is contained in many products including batteries, measuring devices such as thermometers and barometers, electric switches and relays in equipment, lamps including some types of light bulbs, dental amalgam for dental fillings, skin lightening products and other cosmetics pharmaceuticals. Mercury is considered by WHO as one of the top 10 chemicals or groups of chemicals of major public health concern. Mercury may have toxic effects on the nervous, digestive and immune systems and on lungs, kidneys, skin and eyes. This was recently in news because workers which were work, uh, working in the thermo, thermometer manufacture, manufacturing unit of Hindustan Unilever limited limited in Kodaikanal, Tamil Nadu have been demanding justice. Minamata Convention on Mercury, you, you might be aware about this convention. The convention obliges government parties to take a range of actions including addressing mercury emissions to air and to phasing out certain mercury containing products. Now Athira Pili Hydroelectric Project. Athira Pili hydroelectric project proposed across the Chalakudi river by the Kerala State Electricity Board has received the go-ahead from the expert appraisal committee for river valley and hydroelectric projects nearly after two decades. Capacity will be 163 megawatt. Thani Creek, it was also recently in use and this creek has been declared as a flamingo sanctuary by Maharashtra. 
इट विल बी महाराज सेकेंड मरीन सेंचुरी आफ्टर मलवन इन थाने क्रीक एवरी ईयर मेनी फ्लैमिंगोज कम एंड मोस्ट नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द फ्लैमिंगोज आर स्मॉल फ्लैमिंगोज नॉट लार्ज वंस नेशनल ग्रीन हाईवे पॉलिसी अबाउट दिस मूव ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आई वॉज टॉकिंग इन कॉप ट्वेंटी वन पेरिस क्लाइमेट नाउ लेट लेट्स हैव अ डिटेल लुक ऑन दिस Developing a policy framework for the plantation of trees along highways, reducing the impact of air pollution and dust, providing shade on glaring hot roads during summer, reducing the impact of noise pollution and soil erosion, preventing the glare from the headlights of incoming vehicles, generating employment, planting trees up along 6,000 km of highways in the first year. Funding will be a green highways fund would be set up from contribution of one percent of the civil work of road project cost. National Highways Authority of India would serve as fund manager. Yellow throated bulbul, laboratory for the conservation of endangered species, Lacombs, a conservation arm of the Centre for Cellular and Molecular Biology, will make efforts to conserve yellow throated bulbul. It is endemic to the southern part of India, and it has been given vulnerable status under the IUCN Red List. It is not threatened by poaching or capturing, but by habitat destruction over decades, especially owing to granite mark mining, agricultural expansion, and cattle grazing. Now, let's have a look on National Mission for Green India. This mission is one of the eight missions outlined under the National Action Plan on Climate Change. The goals of the mission are to increase forestry cover to the extent of 5 million hectares and to improve quality of forestry cover on another 5 million hectares of forest or non-forest lands. To enhance ecosystem services like carbon sequestration and storage, hydrological services and biodiversity along with provisioning services like fuel, fodder and timber and non-timber forest producers to increase forest-based livelihood income of about 3 million households. National Action Plan on Climate Change has eight missions. National Solar Mission, National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National Mission for Sustainable Habitat, National Water Mission, National Mission for Sustaining the Himalayan Ecosystem, National Mission for Green India, National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture, and National Mission for Strategic Knowledge on Climate Change. International Solar Alliance the sunshine countries comprise all major countries which come either completely or partly between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. It comprises 107 countries. Sorry, not 107, it's 121. It's, it has been incorrectly mentioned here. The International Solar Alliance will have its secretariat at National Institute of Solar Energy, Gurgaon, in India. India government will provide land at 30 million dollar to form a secretariat for the alliance and will support it for five years this would help india in meeting its solar energy target which is to generate the 100 gigawatt of solar energy by 2022 snowflake coral invasive species snowflake coral corizoa rizi is a species of soft coral in the family of clavul clavulede Clavularidae. Sorry, a very typical name. It is native to the tropical western Atlantic Ocean and has spread to other areas as an invasive species. It is considered invasive because of its capacity to dominate space and crowd out other marine organisms. It is known to inhabit reefs and underwater structures such as shipwrecks and fires, attaching itself to metal, concrete, and even plastic. It is posing a major threat to the coral reef colonies in the Gulf of Mannar, Gulf of Kutch, Goa, and the Anmar and Nicobar Islands. Scientists have already recently discovered the presence of these corals off the coast of Tiruvannamalai and Kanyakumari. It is a species of soft coral in the family Clavularidae. Being a shade-loving species, they grow on hard surfaces away from direct sunlight. These include caves. Or hangs, overhangs, ledges, and under fires. Himalayan forest thrush. The bird has been named Himalayan forest thrush, Juthera salimalli. 
The scientific name honors the great Indian ornithologist Dr. Salim Ali. Salim Ali Bird Sanctuary is also uh, the Salim Ali Bird Sanctuary is present on the Mandovi River in Goa. The Himalayan forest thrush is a variant of the plain back thrush and the European alpine thrush. The Himalayan forest thrush has a more musical call while that of the alpine thrush is raspy and grating. Cyclone Roanu. It originated in a deep depression area near Sri Lanka. It traveled closely along Indian coast and finally had landfall in Bangladesh. It caused heavy rainfall, flooding events, landslides and mudslides in Sri Lanka. It caused torrential rainfalls in coastal regions of India like Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. Indian Navy has sent relief materials in INS Sunana and INS Saklash to flood in Sri Lanka. Asian Water Bird Census data it is also one of the very important topics from which you can expect questions in prelims 2016. The Asian Water Bird Census happens every January across Asia and Australia and it is coordinated by Bombay Natural History Society along with Wetlands International. It began in 1987. Objective of water bird census is to obtain information of water bird population on an annual basis during non-breeding period of most species generally and use it as a basis for monitoring population and for the evaluation of sites. Water birds are defined as species of birds that are ecologically dependent on wetlands. The year 2016 marks the 50th global international water bird census with this it has become the world's longest running biodiversity monitoring program. The observations pertaining to wetland birds of Kerala done over a period of 27 years for release. This happens to be the first countryside citizen science activity on natural history. Sangai grow antilayer deer. The Sangai is an endemic and rare subspecies of grow antilayer deer and also and sorry and found only in Manipur. It is a state animal of Manipur. Its habitat is restricted to the marsh wetland of Kibul Lamcha over the floating biomass of Loktak Lake, which is locally called Fumdi. It is classified as endangered by the IUCN, but it is part of MOEF's recovery program for critically endangered species and habitats. Impact of Kane Bedwa link on tiger population. Kane and Bedwa both are tributaries of Yamuna River. The Kane and Bedwa River linking project aims to irrigate the drought ravaged Bundelkhand region, Bundelkhand region which follows the Annapratha. It involves building a 288 meter Dodhan dam and transfer of surplus water from the Kane River basin to the Bedwa basin. This will submerge nearly 400 of the 4,300 hectares of the Panna Tiger Reserve. Weed Blast Weed blast is an agriculture disease that can cause more than 75% yield loss in affected fields, rendering the region not cultivable for years. It is caused by the Magna Porte or Rizay fungus, which also causes rice blast. It thrives in hot and humid climates. It was first identified in 1985 in Brazil and has since spread to other countries of South America. This disease has recently entered the fields of Bangladesh. It can enter India also by import and wind. Living root bridges. They are prominent in Meghalaya and these bridges become stronger with the passage of time. Pakke Tiger Reserve. It is located in the East Kaming district in Arunachal Pradesh. It was earlier known as Pakwi Tiger Reserve. It is adjacent to Nameri National Park of Assam and Shesa Orchid Sanctuary of and Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary in Arunachal Pradesh. It is bounded by Pakke River and the Bhareli Kaming River at which and both of them are tributaries of Brahmaputra. Kashmir is stag, which is also called as Hangul. It is engendered species found in Dachigam National Park of Srinagar. It is also state animal of Jammu and Kashmir. Reasons for dwindling numbers are domestic livestock grazing by Kashmir Bakarwal community. This community is grazing the fields which was grazed by Kashmiri stag. So these species are undergoing the crunch of grazing area. Full-fledged comet-run sheep breeding center inside the park which causes bacterial infections. 
human activities security forces offices of fisheries protocol and tourism department inside the park and construction of the structures outside the park all these factors are responsible for the dwindling number of kashmiri stag jalmanthan jalmanthan one was held in november 2014 the theme of jalmanthan 2 is integrated approach for sustainable water management Mission Kakatiya, which is helped in raising water levels in Telangana by restoring tanks and water bodies, setting up more rivers or osmosis plants to address the issue of increasing levels of arsenic and fluoride in the groundwater, need for a national law on water, and formulation of a river basin management law. Jal Kranti Abhiyan. Jal Kranti Abhiyan is a program of central government for creating awareness on aspects of water security and water conservation. Under Jal Kranti Abhiyan, two villages, preferably facing acute water scarcity, are being selected as Jal Grams. A card known as Sujalam card with the logo "Water Saved is Water Produced" is being prepared for every Jal Gram, which would provide the yearly status information on availability of water for the village from all sources. Central Water Commission and Central Ground Water Board are the nodal agencies for implementation. August Malya Biosphere Reserve has been recently added in the UNESCO UNESCO list of World Biosphere Reserve network. The August Malya Reserve has the area which falls in the Malabar Rainforest and is one of the noted hotspot in the Western Ghats. It covers about three thousand five hundred square kilometers and is part of different districts of Tamil Nadu and Kerala and established in two thousand one. There are many endemic and endangered species of flora and fauna in the reserve, including the endangered Nilgiri Thar. It includes the Indian ecoregions of moist deciduous forest, montane forest, and shola forest and grasslands. There are three wildlife sanctuaries within the reserve: Shendari, Shendarni, Pepara, and Neya. The Kalakkad Mundanthurai Tiger Reserve was recently included as part of the Biosphere Reserve. It is also home to Kanikaran, one of the oldest surviving ancient tribes in the world. There are 18 biosphere reserves in India, and nine of them were included in the prestigious UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve Network. August Malya is the tenth one to be added to the list. The others are Nilgiri, Gulf of Mannar, Sundarbans, Nanda Devi, Nokre, Pachmarhi, Simli Pal, Achanak Mar, Amar Kantak, and Great Nikobar. August Malya, Augustya Malya Biosphere Reserve was included at the International Coordinating Council of the Men and Biosphere Program of UNESCO that concluded in Peru on March 19. Flora. It mostly consists of tropical forest and is home to 2,254 species of higher plants, including about 400 that are endemic. About 400 red-listed plants have been recorded from ABR. About 125 species of orchids and rare endemic and threatened plants have been recorded from the reserve. Fauna includes the rare animals that are tiger, Asian elephant, and Nilgiri thar. Now about the biosphere reserve. There are places for learning about sustainable development that aims to reconcile the conservation of biodiversity with the sustainable use of natural resources. In India, biosphere reserves protect larger areas of natural habitat and often include one or more national parks. In biosphere reserve, protection is granted not only to the flora and fauna of the protected region but also to the human communities who inhabit these regions and their ways of life. Like in August Mala. Kanikaran tribe has been protected. Coral breaching on Great Barrier Reef. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is suffering its worst coral breaching in recorded history, with 93% of the World Heritage Site affected. This is very pathetic. Breaching occurs when abnormal environmental conditions such as warmer sea temperatures cause corals to explain tiny photosynthetic algae, draining them of their color. Sacred groves. Recently, the State Medicinal Plant Board of Kerala has undertaken a project to protect these groves by activities like biofencing, preparing inventory of plant health, preventing preparing inventory of plant wealth, cleaning up water bodies, and creating awareness about conservation. Forest fragments of various sizes, which are community protected and usually have a significant religious connotation for that community, are called sacred groves. Tawang Hydro 
power project and GT has put a halt on this as it was affecting the habitat of black naked crane. Migratory bird most commonly found in China, it is legally protected in Bhutan and India and is considered sacred to certain Buddhist traditions. IUCN Red List has given it the status of vulnerable. It is locally known as Dhum Dhum Karma. Also, it is the only high altitude crane amongst the 15 species found in the world. Taj Mahal turns green. The historical monument is turning green due to release of fecus and dirt by insect Geoli chironomus. Chironomus calligraphus is the scientific name of this insect Geoli chironomus. Yamuna has become so stagnant due to pouring of waste directly into it that fish that earlier kept insect populations under check are dying. This is resulting into explosive breeding of the insect which is a biological indicator of water quality and localized water pollution. National Disaster Management Plan The plan was unveiled recently. It is the first major national plan for disaster management. The plan aims to make India disaster resilient and reduces loss of lives. It is made, made keeping in mind the Sendai Framework and Sustainable Development Goals. CHIPS Vulture Reintroduction, Reintroduction Program it was launched last year by government of Haryana by putting 10 captive bred vultures in pre-release aviaries close to Jatayu Conservation Breeding Center at Pinjor in Haryana. It is Asia's first gyps vulture reintroduction program. The program is an ex situ means of conservation whereby some vultures are kept at the breeding center for some time and then released into the wild. As vultures play a play pivotal role in keeping the environment clean, their breeds should be increased and the government should constantly work to increase their numbers. Now let's see what is the status of vulture species in India. Mainly four kinds of vultures are found in India. Gypsy species also called Indian vulture, long billed is slander billed vulture. They are critically endangered. Himalayan griffon, closely related to Indian chips but not endangered, only near threatened red-headed vulture which is critically endangered and egyptian vulture which has been listed as endangered as per iucn why is population of vulture declining earlier also i talked about this once again i'm going to repeat this mainly due to use of diclofenac a drug which is given to cattle for inflammation and pain this drug results in kidney failure in vultures where it and when it enters its body through the carcasses. The government has banned diclofenac since 2006, but its illegal use remains in force. People need to be made more aware of the use of alternate drug meloxicam. So the alternative drug is meloxicam. Instead of using diclofenac, people can use meloxicam. Now, Jatayu Conservation Breeding Center, what is it? It is a facility within, sir, uh, sorry, it is a facility within Beer Shikargar Wildlife Sanctuary for the breeding and conservation of Indian vultures in Pinjor town near Chandigarh, Haryana. Alternative to BT cotton, the union government is working to develop a suite of BT cotton genes that can be integrated into traditional varieties and be made available to farmers. This would be a viable alternative to the current BT cotton technology which is largely sourced from foreign company Mahko Malsato Biotech India Limited. It would be a joint collaboration of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research CSIR and the Department of Biotechnology. Why there is a need to develop an alternative variety? Freedom from dependence on foreign technology, improving the availability of seeds to the farmers at affordable prices, under the present licensing system between seed companies and seed technology companies like MMB, the availability and affordability of the seed is not optimal. The government has even thought proposals to make changes to this royalty and technology sharing system and also seeks to regulate the seed prices. An indigenous alternative would address this issue as well. About BT cotton. BT cotton is a genetically modified variety of cotton that contains insecticidal genes sourced from soil bacteria targeted at key cotton pests. It is the only GM crop that is legally allowed in India at present. GM food crops such as brinjal and mustard, which are in advanced stages of regulatory clearances are yet to become available to farmers due to stringent opposition by anti-GM activist groups. 
can't fix project why it is in news recent reports show that the project was able to solidify 95 percent of the injected 250 tons of carbon dioxide into can site in two years using 25 tons of water per ton of carbon dioxide this is a significant achievement of and offers hope for future to reduce the carbon emissions what is it it is project in Iceland that aims to lock away carbon dioxide by reacting with, with basaltic rocks. Carbonated water is injected into the rocks so that it reacts with calcium, magnesium or silicate material present in basaltic rocks. This is called enhanced weathering. Thus, the carbon dioxide is captured permanently without releasing any harmful byproducts. What are the issues related with it? Cost of the process is very high. Since the reactions are exothermic, it is reversible if the rocks are heated. The pumping activity generates seismic activity and also a lot of water is consumed for this very process. Efficient and sustainable city bus service project. India has signed a $9.2 million grant agreement with the World Bank for the efficient and sustainable city bus service project aimed at improving the efficiency of the transport and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The project will be classified under Global Environment Facility Grant with IBRD as the implementing agency. The total cost of the program is $113 million. The rest will be funded by the central, state and city governments for the funding of buses and ancillary infrastructure. The project will complement Union Government's bus funding scheme which was launched to promote public transport in cities by modernizing their bus services. Eurasian Otter Recently, Eurasian Otter were discovered from Satpura Tiger Reserve, Madhya Pradesh and Kanha Page Corridor. It, is believed, it was believed to be restricted to Himalayas only and in some parts of Western Ghats. It is one of the rarest Indian mammal. It has wide distribution covering Europe. Africa and Asia but it is rare in India and it has been categorized as mere threatened according to IUC and red list. That was